Hi, my name is John Orchick. I'm an actor, writer, director, and have been pretty much for most of my life. <laughs> Some of you who might be old enough might remember me from shows like Cop Shop, uh, the Ben Hall series, which is an ABC, BBC, 20th Century Fox co-production, and a whole lot of other shows, both crime shows and number 96, if you're really old enough. <laughs> um, I'm generally a very non-political person, and I don't get involved in anything. But the other day, for the first time ever in my life, I went to a rally. And I went to this rally because I saw something that I probably am really passionate about. I saw the fact that this current government wanted to kill a whole bunch of our beautiful Brumbies. They, of course, called it culling because they were a problem, supposedly. Their numbers are out of control and all kinds of stuff like that, but not substantiated in any ways. There was no proper count done of any of the Brumbies on the three areas here in Victoria and the Alpine areas. And it really upset me, and I'm pretty sure it upset a whole bunch of other people as well. And, in fact, it did because there were a lot of people there. I did something else I've never done in my life. I made up a sign and I carried it. Um, that sign will appear at the end of this little chat and you'll see that I, I had, yeah, it was the most photographed sign on the day, which amused me somewhat, although that was not the intention. Um, I just want to read you something which I think is vitally important and that's an e-petition that's going to go to the Legislative Council in, this, in Victoria. Uh, and it, it's a petition that certain citizens of the state draw the intention of the Legislative Council, the survival of the unique wild horse, Australia's Brumby. I guess you could liken them to the American Mustang. The Brumbies have lived here for over 200 years or thereabouts, long before the creation of any national parks or man-made wetlands. They are now under threat from the government whose plans are to remove all Brumbies from these areas. And... I think that that is a travesty, absolute travesty. They call it culling. It's not culling, it's killing. And it's not even humane. We're going to shoot them from helicopters or nighttime thermal shooting. How do you know what you're hitting? You see an image and you're going to hit it. Is it going to be a clean kill? Chances are, no, it won't. In fact, I'm damn sure it's not. It's cruel, it's inhumane, and it's wrong. It's wrong for a whole lot of reasons. Now, I'll tell you something about our Brumbies here in Victoria. They come from the same founding stock linked to our early settlers, and they were used in World War I and World War II. The horse was as much a hero as the soldier. They were soldiers in their own right. Genetic sampling has taken place since 2014, with Brumbies being included in the, wild, in the World Wild Horse Database. To date, DNA sampling has established an individual DNA line to the Barma Horses and the Barma National Park, with over 80 samples tested. Victorian government scientific reports do not differentiate between the impacts caused by all introduced species or, for that matter, acknowledge the benefits of Brumbies. They just want to exterminate them, really, because I think they're damaging uh, eco flora and other fauna are in danger as a result of them. The fact is, deer, wild dogs, cats, those things cause ten times, a hundred times the damage that a single Brumby might cause. Brumby bundlelines should be protected in the form of legislation, namely a Victorian Brumby Heritage Act, which should recognise the heritage value of sustainable wild horse populations within the Barma. Alpine National Parks and surrounding area of Bogong High Plains. The petitioners therefore request that the Legislative Council call on the government to abandon plans to remove all Brumbies from the Bogong High Plains, Barma and Eastern Alps and instead manage sustainable Brumby populations, introduce legislation to protect Brumby bloodlines and establish scientific and community advisory panels to participate in all future decisions for Brumby populations. Now that should include a representative from key Brumby organisations, and there are several of them. Brumby's Matter is one such organisation. I met the people on the day. They're wonderful, they care, they're passionate. 
Brumbies are not the issue here. Brumbies are not the problem. The problem here seems to me it's Parks Victoria, who really don't have a clue what to do. They're guessing at the number of Brumbies that are out there. There have been no counts done since before the bushfires, and nor have there been any done since the bushfires. So there is no substantial proof that the Brumbies are running wild in the sense that there are too many of them. They say that their numbers have doubled in the last 10 years, have they? <clears throat> Without a count, <clears throat> excuse me, how would you know? They don't. It's a wild guess. And this cull, or shall we call it a kill, can't take place. And it was wonderful and heartening the other night when a motion passed in the Legislative Assembly here in Victoria to halt the killing of these beautiful animals, at least for the time being. Because Chairman Dan has well known for the fact that he will ignore public opinion and just do what he wants. And that's really very sad. These Brumbies are a stunning part of our heritage. Now, how did I get involved? Do you think I'm just here preaching or something? No, I'm not. <laughs> uh, I, I first rode a horse when I was 14 years of age, I think, or 15, perhaps. And ever since then, I just fell in love with them. By the time I was 18, I was leasing about 200 acres not far from my place uh, in Perth and <laughs> a place called Beachborough. And um, I ended up with about 40 or 50 Brumbies. We used to hire them out. People used to ride them in the bush because there was so much bush at the time. Of course, I was really what you'd call a rough rider. I really had no... And there's no finesse in my riding. It was just jump on the damn thing and hoon through the bush. Sometimes bareback, sometimes you came off, sometimes you didn't. But I had a lot of fun. One of the things that we used to do then is we used to, um, a few mates of mine and I who were like-minded and aged, would uh, hire a big semi-trailer and go up north to a place round about an area called Mora, which is about 400-odd miles north of Perth. Um... And we used to round up Brumbies, select the young ones, put them on the truck and bring them home to Perth, break them in um, and sell them. Out of one of these, <laughs> out of one of these trips, and I don't quite know how we did it, um, we managed to, instead of get all the young ones, we managed to get an older fella in there. And, um, and he wasn't broken in, and so we broke him in and... It was a bit of fun, and um, but he ended up being the safest thing on four legs. You could put a four-year-old on him, and the old fellow, we called him the old colonel, never did anything wrong. He thought he was smart. He thought he was cunning, because, you see, I used to go and round the horses up on these 200 acres, because it was plain. They weren't paddocks. It was just one huge area. And, uh, and bring them into the corrals. And I'd look around, and see where's the colonel um, he's not there and then in the distance I could see this entire body protruding from behind a tree and when I went round there his head was behind the tree and he like an ostrich thought if I can't see his head I can't see him and I just used to yell at him say colonel let's go and off he'd trot um, but he was a wonderful horse um, I sold him in the end and I sold him to some people who, because when I left Perth, to continue my ambitions as an actor and my career, and I sold all my horses, I got rid of everything, but I've been riding horses ever since. Since then, of course, I've learned a few um, bits and pieces that I didn't know then, and I am a little more adept at riding. And one of my wonderful experiences were during Cop Shop, during that year, I was, I was going to Perth there for the Perth Telethon. And uh, Channel 7 said to me, oh, look, we'd like to take you out to this place called El Cabello Blanco. And um, so you can just do some publicity shots out there um, because we're promoting uh, the place. And I said, oh, yeah, what is it? They said, it's a Spanish writing school. And I said, oh, Spanish? He said, yes, um, they, um, they, they're all stallions, very much like the Lipizzanas, except that they're not Lipizzanas as a breed. They are um, Andalusians. And they were amazing. So when I went out there, the horse master, who was Spanish, said, um, do you ride? And I said, well, yes, I do. But I looked at these people. I thought, no, they ride. I don't. I just sit on a horse. Anyhow, 
Um, they then dressed me up in all the regalia that they did their shows in. And we went out into the arena and I was there with Ramon and I rode this stunning grey stallion um, called Rufian. And he rode uh, Bodeguero too, another absolutely beautiful bay. Uh, the bloodlines are amazing. Anyhow, I really learned a few things about riding horses that day. I learned how to do a Spanish walk on the horse. I learned how to do a levade. I have a photo behind me, um, which I will insert, which shows um, Ramon on the ground and him training me how to do a levade with two very simple aids. It was quite amazing. As I said before, <clears throat> if we have to control the numbers, there are a lot of alternatives. There's rehoming, one alternative. There's fertility control, which is another alternative. And, you know, do we really need to do anything at all? I mean, are there really that many Brumbies out there that they are going to destroy the high country? What a load of absolute rubbish. To finish off, I just want to say that if indeed the Brumby population is out of control, which uh, we don't know because there's no proof and there has not been a count done, as I've said before. So it's all guesswork by Parks Victoria, um, supported by a rather callous and uncaring government who have other agendas and the Brumbies are not on that agenda. I just want to say thank you to Renee. You're a wonderful person and all your work has been incredible here. And probably as a result of that, that I'm doing this video because otherwise I wouldn't have done it. Um, so I guess thank you very much and thank you for telling me about uh, the Brumbies here in Victoria. I have been up there in the High Plains, but it was a long, long time ago. Um, and I really enjoyed it. It's a beautiful country and I think we've got to keep it beautiful. And part of that beauty is making sure that the Brumby is a part of the landscape. We don't want that Brumby obliterated. I'm going to end now with my little poster, which got too many photos taken of it, really.